What's going on everyone? Today we are talking about a Microsoft Teams certified panel from Yealink, the Yealink Room Panel. In this video, we'll be taking a look at all the components that come with the Room Panel Kit, your mounting options. We'll go through the process of actually mounting the device, getting it all set up like this, getting it cabled, and then signing in to the Microsoft Teams app on the device and using it in a capacity that we would if it were outside of a conference room. Let's dig in. The Yealink Room Panel Kit ships with, of course, the Yealink Room Panel itself. Then we've got a couple different brackets, our zero degree bracket and our 20 degree bracket, both of which allow you to route the cable out the side. These little panels in the side can pop out. You'll see that there, you'll see that there, multiple directions to route the cables out of, or if you're gonna put them into the wall, you've got these holes at the back that allow for that as well. All the mounting hardware is included right here. We've got the security latch and the included screwdriver. The metal bracket goes uh, on all of the mounting options, allowing the room panel to attach to them. And then you've got a power cable here. You can optionally use power over ethernet with a ethernet cable instead of doing your power this way. But if you want to use Wi-Fi for your connectivity and you have no ethernet cable coming to the device, you'll need to power it with this cable. And then if you want to use a glass mounting option, there are a couple different adhesives that can come with the kit uh, to let you uh, adhere the mounting gear to the glass panels. The Yealink room panel has an eight inch anti-fingerprint screen, and it's only nine millimeters thick, giving it a thin profile when mounted. It has dual microphones built in right up top, full RGB LED lights on both sides. It's running the Android 9 operating system. For connectivity, it can support both wired and wireless internet access, as well as Bluetooth capability for Bluetooth extensibility, things like in-room sensors for auto-reserve, auto-release options. While we're looking at the device as a Microsoft Teams certified panel today, this device is also certified for Zoom rooms and a number of other platforms. Taking a look at the underside, we've got two ports back here. We've got our power port right there, and then we've got that ethernet port. We can do power over ethernet, uh, bypassing the need for DC power. However, if we're gonna use a wireless option for connecting to the internet, we will need to run that power cable through. At the top back of the device, we have this little hole right here, and that is so that we can install this little security latch. It will sit right here, and when you squeeze in both sides, we see a hole there where we can screw this down into that hole, holding it firmly on place. Then once the security latch is installed in the back of the room panel, and you go to put the room panel in this back portion right here, this will line up like so. The, in, the sides of the security latch will go in as it slides into place, and it will be locked in there. When the security latch is installed, it'll look just like that, and this will make sure that we can click this into place on our mount without it being pulled back out. In our demo, we're not actually gonna put the mount on the wall, but we're gonna use the 20 degree mount, and you can see that we've already attached the metal bracket to it. The provided small black screws uh, will attach to the four corners, and you'll wanna pay close attention to the fact that uh, we see top, inside the bracket. So the bracket should be installed in the wall with the hardware provided with the top up. And then we have the metal bracket showing top up. So those both should be lined up together. And then before we go to try and connect the room panel, uh, we need to mount our, or, or run our cabling. In our case, we're gonna do the PoE route. So we're gonna take a PoE cable and we will bring that cable around the back. And we're gonna assume that we have a, a we're running our cables through the wall. So we're not gonna have cables coming out the side. We would bring the cable in through that center hole there, and it will now be able to connect into the back of the device. Okay, to put things all together, we've got our PoE cable coming through the back here. It needs to connect in to the back of our device, like so. So we won't need that power cable. And then we are going to take this, that cable is obviously gonna rest inside, we line up the device. And once it connects in, that security latch latches up top. 
and now this is not coming apart. Okay, even though we're not mounting this to the wall, everything else is set up. We've still got it attached to the 20 degree mount to keep it propped up anyway. And now we can connect uh, the PoE cord into the Ethernet cord into a PoE port. Once we do that, we get power to the device. Those LEDs in the side light up vibrant green. I wish the video uh, got rid of some of the glow and you could actually see the vibrance of the color. Uh, but the device powers on and gets us ready to set it up for Microsoft Teams. All right, as the device boots up for the first time, we need to walk through some initial setup. We've got English United States selected and that's what I need. So we'll say next there. Uh, I gotta choose your time zone. I'm gonna put it in central time zone here. And then it brings us to the Microsoft Teams interface. So before we go to sign in, let's take a look at some of our settings up here. Uh, right up top, we've got our accessibility settings. So we've got some certification information about the device itself. Uh, going to about, we get all the typical things we've seen there, our model information, IP address, uh, Mac addresses, all that fun stuff, firmware versions, uh, the ability to reboot the device. Down in the admin only, we've got our language section. Uh, I'm going to basic, I'm going to put the default admin password in here, which I recommend that you change at a uh, appropriate point. Got some basic settings, volume, LEDs, LED brightness, uh, USB port, uh, time and date. We have already set our time zone there. The date's already correct. We've got some uh, NTP pools there that we're pulling from. Uh, if we go to display, we've got adaptive brightness and then our brightness settings power saving mode, so system will go to sleep after a certain period of time. And then what is that power saving timeout? Right now it's 20 minutes, and we can configure working hours if we wanna configure that as well. I'm gonna turn on that adaptive brightness because um, I think it'd be interesting to see how it, uh, how it handles the, the lighting environment. We can see it's already doing some adjusting based on the lighting of the room. Uh, going to our network, I've got a network status, ethernet cable, um, you know, it's pulled an IP address, so we're good there. Uh, if we come back to our network settings, we've got DHCP, DNS, IPv6, and then diagnostics right down here. We can do ping, trace route if we're having troubles. Uh, if you want to go Wi Fi instead of a wired network, you've got that option. Going to upgrade, we can check for upgrade. It says we're already at the latest version, so that's great. If we want to turn on automatic updates, we can there as well. Debugging gives us factory reset, uh, logging, and then of course, changing the admin password is always a recommended best practice item. Coming back out to the Microsoft Teams screen, we can click sign in. Once the company portal does its thing, we're presented with our sign in name. Of course, we can do this remotely as well. Put in our password, hit sign in, getting our device registered so that we can find it in the Teams admin center and manage it there appropriately. Perfect, we're all done. Now they're just finishing up a couple things and there we go. We're back to our LEDs being green because the room is currently available. Uh, we've got the standard background, the name of the room here. Now we signed in with the same account that the uh, room system inside the room would be signed in with. They share that same team's room license. So no additional licensing required if your room is already licensed. We're signed in, the name is Yaylink Room Panel. All of our time slots are available here. The room is available to be reserved. Clicking on our settings. Our settings icon is in the bottom corner. We have report and issue, about, and device settings. We come into device settings, all the same stuff we looked at before. And of course, the admin uh, is only available with a password. Now, if we walked up to this room and wanted to reserve it, we would click on reserve. You see that we have an ad hoc meeting because we're just reserving ad hoc. We have a start time based on the time it is right now and we choose an end time. Ah, oh, we need to be in here till the end of the hour. So we'll say that, 12, we'll click reserve. And as soon as we do that, then we have these LEDs go to purple. The room is in use. We see that it is reserved. Now you can see that the meeting room has actually been invited to a demo Yaylink room panel meeting, and that shows up on the schedule. So even though we're currently reserved, we see that we've got a meeting coming up right after that. So we're not gonna be available in this room till the one o'clock to two o'clock slot. Well, there you have it, setting up and using the Microsoft Teams certified panel, the Yaylink room panel. 
If you like this video, please hit the like button on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already, and then turn on notifications so that you are in the know every time I come out with another informative video like this one. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope we'll see you back here for the next product overview video.